Thank you very much. A combination of Varnakam, Namaskaram, Pushamdid, and of course, my language. Welcome. So thank you very much to um, Swamiji, Srihari Pasad, uh, for the members of the Sri Mohan Foundation, to all of the thought leaders, to Professor Bhatt, to Madam Gitanjali, to all of those who represent the diversity of India. It's a pleasure to be back here. The last time I was here was actually with the Honorable Governor of Kerala, Arif Mohammed Khan. That was in October 21, and the topic was peace and reconciliation. And he did, as he always does, improvise, Im improvise with incredible erudition. And that's among things that bring us together. Speaking of philosophies and Indian tradition and its diverse traditions, the United States, through the US Consulate General in Chennai, has long enjoyed the generosity, hospitality, and friendship of Sri Vishnu Mohan Foundation. Through the foundation, we have been enriched by different viewpoints, such as today's retrospective on Indian philosophical traditions from the Vedas to the Charvaka. Charvaka ideology and its influence transcended the borders of India, reaching as far as ancient Greece. It contributed to the development of empirical understanding, rationalism, and the scientific mindset. Liberalism, freedom, and individualism, empirical concepts that grew out of the Charvaka school of thought are core ideals that shaped the birth of my country, the United States of America. This year on July 4th, the United States celebrates its 247th anniversary of our Declaration of Independence. Every year on that date, we recognize the diverse streams of philosophical thought that contributed and continue to contribute to the founders' experiment in democracy, liberty, and freedom, becoming principles that still guide the nation to this day. Cardia or acardia, to act or not to act, is the confluence of two contras, treated extensively in Indian philosophy. It's a question that captivated philosophical minds for generations and over the ages. My colleagues and all of you, more versant than I am in ancient and epic Indian scripture, note that the Bhagavad Gita explores this question in the dialogue, as we've just heard, between Arjuna and Krishna. Today, we live in a world that faces multiple challenges and requires our action, whether wise, ethical, moral, or reflection on a newer and evolving notion of these concepts and what those nomenclatures may mean in today's context. I loved when we heard text and context. It is a time to take bold and decisive action against extremism, climate change, religious intolerism, religious intolerance, majoritarianism, authoritarianism, war, and aggressions. The United States and the international community are looking toward India to lead with wise actions and when necessary, no action. United States and India, the world's two largest democracies share a stated commitment to defend and advance human rights. This is reflected in the rich tapestry of our societies. This week, President Biden and Prime Minister Modi met again in Washington, as we all have been watching, forging ties deep and broad between our two countries, leading as two Indo-Pacific powers on initiatives with global potential and implications. Among top priorities of US mission to India is reinforcing our shared values to promote and defend human rights and religious freedom. 
India is an ideal partner to advance these goals, given the exponential girth of its diversity. It is a very exciting time in the US-India relationship. Last night, during Prime Minister Modi's official state visit, the White House released a joint statement from the United States and India. Among many and broad areas of collaboration, the leaders welcomed the establishment of the Tamil Studies Chair at the University of Houston and reinstating the Vivekananda Chair at the University of Chicago to further research and teaching of India's history and culture. As I figured, Vivekananda will certainly resonate with this audience. Universal respect for freedom of religion or belief is a core objective of US foreign policy. The First Amendment of the US Constitution and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights bear witness to this. Everyone should have the freedom to change beliefs, have no beliefs at all, practice those beliefs in public or in private, alone or in community with others, and to manifest belief in worship, observance, practice, and teaching. I thank the Vishnu Mohan Foundation for being a champion in building interfaith dialogue. In fact, the idea was presented to me to be here today at the Ramazan Iftar break fast. And they promote religious freedom, bring together religious leaders, diplomats, academics, bureaucrats, and NGOs to foster religious harmony and peaceful coexistence. I thank my colleague from the Consul General of Thailand, uh, Consul General von, per von, von Prasert, and all of the dignitaries who were here before us and are still here now. And certainly thank you, Swamiji. Thank you very much. Thank you.